Nine eight four five eleven hundred. Hey, you're on the air. Thanks for waiting. I'm a blabber today. Yeah, you're always a blabber, Judd. Yeah, hey, well. it's Chuck. Hey, hey I, I had a couple couple things I wanted to hit. But first off, uh, as far as Mister Deplorable goes, there whether you agree with his politics or not, there's there's a lot of wisdom there, and I hope that his family appreciates the wisdom of Mister Deplorable, and I hope that his family takes the time to buy him a diet pop and gives him a hug and sits down and listens to some of his wisdom once in a while, even if they don't agree with him. I think that's an important thing. All right. You, you, I, I got I'm just saying. I'm just, yeah. just saying. There, there, there are people that are very lucky to have such a wise, wise person in their family. Um, hey, my phone blew up a little bit ago because people were telling me that Dave Hine was apparently like threatening to turn off my power or something. And I'd like to give you my analysis of the situation here. All right. Well, here's what I got out of that was he was making a joke, but others are no, not seeing fine. that. But anyways, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that's, I mean, that's the thing, you know, that's the thing about our culture. Some people think things are a joke. Some people get jokes and some people don't anymore. That's the problem with making jokes in 2020 is not everybody gets them, you know. Yeah, but my analysis of the situation is simple. Poe's mad. Poe's mad. That's the best way to rectify the situation. Because here's the thing. A group of people that the Times recently called insignificant played a factor in the election the other night. And now... I completely agree with your analysis. Jane was the biggest sort of ace up Frank's sleeve, but there was a lot of different factors that came together, the endorsements. But I know you know this, you appreciate this, that between MX cartoons and no McDermott for Congress and a lot of other things, there was a lot of things that were being put out. A lot of truth was being told about a certain candidate, and that swayed some people. Not a no, lot. I, you know what? I will agree with that. It, it is a consistent harsh message against McDermott by MX and all the folks that are in that group. And you guys have um, in really enormous sway over uh, uh, some people in the region. And you're right, some people that might be like, oh, I kind of like what McDermott's doing, and then they watch your guys' stuff. I mean, it may, you make it hard for people to vote for him. I'm not, I'm not downplaying this. I'm saying Jane Bervan is a, is a number, is a strength there that was not. I completely reported. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I com- well, but I'm saying there's a number of factors. So this idea like, well, what was the thing that cost McDermott the election? It wasn't one thing. It was 10 different things. It was the endorsements. It was Viskoski. It was the unions. It was also MX cartoons. We, yeah. didn't, we didn't get him several thousand votes. We maybe got him a couple hundred votes. I had Republicans reach out to me and say, I pulled a D ballot for the first time in my life to vote against McDermott. Maybe we did that. Maybe their union did that. I don't know. But a number of people voted against him. A number of people voted for Frank or another candidate because of our work. And no, I, I, I agree with you entirely. On uh, And you irk a lot of people, that, that especially the ones MX comes after. I mean, when he, he, he lambastes me all the time. And, and the problem is, is that when he does, there's like a morsel of truth to it that he blows up and usually makes me look stupid. But... It's it, he's really good, man. He does it out of love. It's, no, it's a team he effort. does it, we out, do it of... out of we 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 absolutely love you, Jim. And if it wasn't for you, I don't even know what the region would look like right now because it would be so tough for people like Paul Goddard to get traction, people like Ken Davidson to get traction because we would be stuck with that old guard newspaper media that doesn't tell. They don't they don't lie, but they just don't tell the full story. They didn't they didn't once mention any of the things that happened, you know, with us or anything like that. But. That's not the story they want to tell. Uh, hey, but Chuck, I have one other question. You do. Go, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Mark Zuckerberg right now it refuses to touch Donald Trump's posts, and Twitter does. Which one is right? Look, I, I mean, I would say here's your simple answer. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan. I don't know if you watch him very often, but he had Jack, is it Joe or Jack Dorsey, I always forget. He had him on a while back, and they started talking about why do you pull posts. And I mean, he basically said, it's not my, basically, he said, I have a team of people that decide what to pull and what not to. And in his mind, that's his responsibility to sort of regulate speech. And that's what always, my spidey senses start tingling and my hair starts standing up whenever anybody says, especially in private industry, starts saying, well, it's our job to sort of regulate speech. Like, no, no, boss, it's not. It was the founding fathers that just told us we're not, you're not going to, it's not your job. It's not your place to regulate speech. Yeah, it's your platform. But I think as soon as you start doing something like that, I mean, even the idea that they pulled his post, his Twitter uh, post, and it wasn't really threatening. It was something that was just sort of rhetoric that we've been hearing for a long time. 
you've immediately you've immediately you've helped the divide. You've you've chipped away at that divide. You've made it a little bit deeper because all you're going to do here's here's my ultimate take on this. If you create a situation, and I have friends at Facebook, and I tell them this constantly, I said, you guys cannot be, you cannot be thought police. You cannot be deciding whose newspaper story is accurate and whose isn't. There are cases on Facebook, there are things you literally cannot post. There are news stories that you cannot post on Facebook because they have flagged it and said you cannot post that. And I can, I've got screenshots of it. You see, so all right, well, do, oh, you understand where I sit in that, right? Because but no, here's the, here's the no, no, here, the legislation, is, the way it's set up, and is that I have to police it. That's you don't have to th- police. You don't have to police thought. You have to. You have to follow up on 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 threats. And the problem is, just like with you and the FCC, vulgarity. You know, like obscenities. Are, we know it when we see it. It's the same with the threats. It's not like, hey, here's a threat. Here, here's a list of threats, and here's a thing. List of things that no, aren't no, threats no. or the, violence. The, the, the amount of regulation that goes into what kind of. Uh, 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 Advertisement uh, and no, sponsorship. No, no, I, I know, I know. I yeah, know. all right. of that. I mean, they don't have to do any of that. They don't have to. Uh, the Russians can put stuff on Facebook. I'd have to make them come in here and fill out a form. Okay. Right. Well, no, no, no. That Facebook now does that too. I have to. I have to get a postcard in the mail before I can do political filings on Facebook. So but they can they post are directly. Mm-hmm. They have right. way more freedom than I have, and I just want their freedom. All right, but Chuck. I got to get ready. You got Real one. Quick, quick, yeah, go seconds. ahead. Here's what you're going to create. You are going to create echo chambers. If Facebook and Twitter start regulating conservative speech, they're going to have a liberal echo chamber. The conservatives are going to go somewhere else, and they're going to have a conservative echo chamber. And guess what? We are never going to have any sort of productive dialogue if everybody's in their own little – we call it, we can't say what it is on the radio, but they have their own little circle, and they never have discussions. Everybody agrees with them. Everybody that doesn't agree with them gets blocked, gets kicked out. All you do is create echo chambers and more divide. That's what these people on social media, Zuckerberg, Dorsey, all those guys, this is all they're going to accomplish. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Talk Take to care. You. Talk to you. All right.